Welcome to another episode of What is Hashimoto's with Dr. Martin Rutherford. To find out more on any of our topics or for information on scheduling a consultation with Dr. Rutherford, please visit us at whatishashimoto's.com. And now, here's Dr. Rutherford. Hey, how you doing? Dr. Rutherford here. The question of the day is <clears throat> one I have heard too many times. <laughs> Why can't I lose weight with Hashimoto's? Or better yet, can you guarantee I'm going to lose weight when you treat my Hashimoto's? Um, and the answer is kinda. <laughs> I guess no, guarantee, but, but yes, maybe. So why can't you lose weight when you have Hashimoto's? So Hashimoto's is a multifactorial disease. There's so many things that are involved with Hashimoto's as far as attacking the thyroid and the thyroid affects so many aspects of your physiology. If you, to keep it simple, um, Hashimoto's, I'll step back. To, to, if someone comes in here and says, um, I, I can't lose weight, I've done everything I've tried, I mean, I've changed my diet, I've eaten every diet, I've gone to Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, I've, I've run my bike 20, 20 miles a day, and I've, I've tried HCG when I only ate 500 calories a day, and just the whole thing, and I can't lose weight. Um, it's either going to be a mismanaged diagnosis of your thyroid, mismanaged thi thyroid. It's going to be mismanaged gut problems, which can be caused by thyroid. It's going to be mismanaged blood sugar problems, or it's going to be mismanaged stress responses. I've talked about each one of those others is why we, you, you can't lose weight, but let, let's just stick with the thyroid. So in, in the end, Hashimoto's is a autoimmune thyroid disease. Primary problem is uh, a, an attack against the thyroid. And uh, I found out a couple of weeks, a couple of weekends ago that, um, that there are 39 triggers for Hashimoto's that we know of now, a lot of them are a lot of them are food sensitivity triggers, and, and these things will beat up the thyroid. I'm keeping this very simple, okay, because I'm, I'm trying to keep these things at five, six, eight minutes. Okay, so so the, the thyroid gets beat up, you get beat up, it gets tired, it starts, you know, you start damaging tissue. It's not, it's not, it's not making enough thyroid hormone. Most, but not all, most, some, some Hashimoto's patients have trouble putting on weight, but most Hashimoto's patients can't lose weight because everything slows down. They're not making, they're not putting out enough T3, they're not putting out enough T4, so the gut slows down. So the gut slows down, now you get leaky gut, now you get, now you get, uh, now you get, maybe you get small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, uh, maybe you're not digesting your food properly, maybe you're, you're not absorbing nutrients properly, and, 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 and so everything kind of slows down. You, but, and, and all of that leads to you not making enough energy in your cells. In the end, you know, you're not making enough energy. It's the old, it used to be the old, well, you gotta go eat less calories and go and, 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 and exercise more. And that works for some people, but it doesn't work for Hashimoto's people because all of that stuff goes to cause you to not get proper nutrients to your, to your cells. Mitochondria are little organelles in your cells. They make energy, you're not making energy, you're not gonna lose weight. I mean, you're not going to lose weight. Those are the energy things. So you can exercise, 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 exercise. It doesn't matter. You get an imbalance in bacteria in your gut. You can get something called uh, lipopolysaccharides, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. You can get bacteria in your gut, bad bacteria in your gut, that can actually break down and then the, um, the leftover pieces <laughs> of the cell walls of those bacteria can get through your leaky gut, which is probably caused by your Hashimoto's and a number of other things. And then that can make its way around your system. That can create a lot of inflammation, it can cause joint pain and a lot of other different things. And, but one of the biggest things that it can do is cause your insulin to not work right. So if your insulin doesn't work right, your insulin receptors doesn't work right. Cortisol, insulin keeps trying to hit your cells. It keeps trying to get the blood sugar from your food into your cells. It's not getting in there. It's not getting utilized properly. Um, and, and so it breaks down into triglycerides and, and the next thing, that'll make you put on weight. Before that, the insulin is highly inflammatory. Insulin raises something called cortisol. Cortisol gets high, 
blood sugar gets high for no reason at all. Anything you eat causes your you, you know, food sensitivity, you eat, you, you, you have this cortisol that gets high. The next thing you know, you're, you're creating high blood sugar from eating broccoli, which you were allergic to, you're, and your blood sugar is going up, you can't lose weight, and you're going like, what the heck's going on here? I know I don't expect you to follow these patterns. I'm trying to make a point here. This is like multiple vicious cycles. Stress. Stress will cause a problem with your thyroid. Stress can be a trigger to Hashimoto's. Hashimoto starts getting an inflammatory response. You have stress hormones. Hashimoto's goes through all the things I just got done telling you, or, or you have just stress hormones. In addition to the stress hitting the thyroid, both of those increase inflammatory responses, both of those increase th uh, thyroid, uh, um, um, cortisol, both of those increase your blood sugar, next thing you know, you can't lose weight. And, and, there, and, and there's more, you just, the, just, the, just the immune inflammation from the thyroid starts breaking down the thyroid, and most of you are Hashimoto's hypothyroid. And so the more hypo you get, the more your energy levels don't work and the more you end up putting on weight. Thyroid, somebody comes in here and says, look, I've tried everything, I, can't, I cannot lose weight. Um, historically, I'm gonna look at thyroid, blood sugar, we just talked about that, adrenals, which is the stress response, and anytime anything happens, if you get a bad bacteria and it flares up inflammation, it hits your thyroid, it creates a hypothyroid response, you're not gonna be able to, you're, you're, you're not gonna make enough energy, your mitochondria are gonna go down. Any one of those 39 triggers can cause you to create an inflammatory response, attach the thyroid, you, you're damaging thyroid, actual thyroid glandular tissue where you make your thyroid hormone, you're not making that, you're going like this, you're not gonna lose weight. So thyroid, blood sugar, adrenals, stress. I mean, I could go on and cover every one of those 39 triggers, but it all comes down to the same thing. You, with the exception of the thin Hashimoto's patient who can't put on weight because their thyroid is being attacked so much that those mitochondria are going like this and, and they're like burning their calories like crazy just sitting in their chair. The, I mean, I used the case example of the lady who came in here and said, I'm, I'm, look, I'm eating 1,500 calories a day. I'm riding my bike 20 miles a day. For a year, I've lost eight pounds. I stopped doing it for a week and I put five back on. That's, Hash, that's, that's, that's Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It's, it's, you have to get the immune inflammatory responses down by figuring out what the triggers are. And that, that it could be food sensitivities, it can be toxicities, it can be nutrient deficiencies, it can be bad bacteria. It can be a number of things. You, that's, the, that's the battle. That's the battle. And that's why when you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it's hard to lose. And, and, and I said, some people don't lose weight. We'll get people, we'll figure out every single new trigger that we, that we can. And I, I would say, I, I would honestly think, I would say that 90% of people come in here with Hashimoto's who can't lose weight, all right? I would say 90% of them lose weight, varying degrees. Some don't lose all the weight that they wanted because there's other reasons, okay? But, uh, but then there's that group, there's a small group that doesn't lose the weight, no matter what we do. Um, and, 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 and so there's probably more triggers that we don't know about yet. I, I mean, I went to the seminar a couple of weeks ago. You're gonna be hearing about some of this stuff because I learned some really cool stuff. Not a ton of it, but enough <laughs> to go like, oh my God, this is gonna be really helpful. And so, uh, so we'll be talking about some of that. But yeah, this is an evolving situation and, and, and it's, it's a conundrum. But for the most part, that is the core kind of explanation of why it, a Hashimoto's patient can't lose weight. Thank you for joining us for another episode of What is Hashimoto's? To find out more on any of our topics or for information on scheduling a consultation with Dr. Rutherford, please visit us at whatishashimoto's.com.